Okay, this is gonna be a really quick video, just looking at the strategies that humans can use to try and reduce the threat posed to them by climate change. And basically, when we look at the strategies that we're uh, gonna be using regarding this, we can split it into two elements. We can look at mitigation and adaptation. Now, mitigation strategies are designed to deal with the cause of the problem, i.e. they're designed to reduce or prevent greenhouse gas emissions. Adaptation strategies, on the other hand, are more on a local scale. These are strategies designed to try and change the way we live our lives, the way we operate, in a way that will allow us to cope with the changes caused by climate change. It's not looking at stopping it, it's just trying to kind of make the best out of a bad situation, I suppose, is the way you could explain it. So let's start off with the mitigation ones. Okay? Some of these are pretty straightforward. Okay? One of the most obvious mitigation strategies is an attempt to move away from fossil fuel dependency. Okay? greater investment in alternative energy production or renewable energies, things like wind power. Okay, we've seen that off the coast of uh, West Sussex, where we are, if you've seen the Rampian wind farm. Okay, it's solar power, geothermal energy, hydroelectric power, and so on. Okay. There has obviously been a lot of sort of counter to that, saying that it's very expensive, it's not reliable or so on. But with advances in renewable energy technology, it does seem to become more and more of a viable option. In 2010, the United Nations estimated that over 221 billion US dollars was invested in renewable energy uh, strategies. Another thing to do, again, very simple, is afforestation. Okay. We know that trees act as carbon dioxide storage. They take in carbon dioxide as part of uh, photosynthesis and they store that up. Okay. Obviously, as humans, one of the things we've done is a huge amount of deforestation, and we do see a link between when humans really started to have a major impact on the Earth in terms of deforestation and carbon dioxide uh, levels in the atmosphere. Obviously, if we can afforest the trees, replant them, we can hopefully maybe sort of reverse that. One of the other things as well is carbon captures. Okay, so what we're actually starting to see is that advances in technology allowing us to replicate the way the Earth stores carbon either in bedrock or in the oceans. We're actually able to use that now, uh, these technologies, to start doing that. The UK is actually the world leader in carbon capture and storage solutions. One of the other things as well is international agreements. For example, the Paris Climate Conference of 2015. This is where the United Nations gets countries together and asks them to agree to challenges uh, to meet targets to reduce carbon dioxide emissions or set caps on how much carbon dioxide these countries can emit without being fined and so on. However, it is easier than said than done. Some countries are unwilling to uh, agree to these. So, for example, China has historically been unwilling to agree to these, saying that uh, its carbon dioxide emissions are currently being released and it's an attempt to develop and that countries like the UK and USA weren't uh, restricted when they were developing, so why should China? That then leads to the problem that, for example, we know recently that Donald Trump pulled the United States of America out of this agreement, again, believing in it not to uh, have been planned effectively. Also, there are some countries that simply can't afford to uh, basically uh, manage their carbon dioxide emissions. They don't have the money to invest in alternative energy productions or carbon capture storages. Moving over to the adaptation then, as I said, this is normally more on a local scale, so it's strategies that people can do, countries can do, regions can do, that will allow them to deal with the problem that climate change is uh, sort of guaranteed to bring them. One of the major issues also with climate change is uh, sea level rise, melting of ice caps, okay, resulting in global sea levels rising. So what we're seeing is in a lot of areas is heavy investment in things such as sea walls and flood barriers to reduce the risk posed by the sea level rise. Okay. London is a perfect example of this. There are currently plans to uh, redesign the Thames Barrier so that it would be able to uh, withstand much larger floods than it was originally built for. On top of this, there are obviously major concerns regarding water supplies. Not only will climate change result in warmer temperatures, but it's generally going to result in drier climates, particularly in places like the south of the UK. So what we're looking at is several ways that we can kind of adapt to that problem. One of those is to reduce the demand on our water supply. So find a way of reducing how much water we actually use in our day to daily life. That may be, for example, retrofitting homes so that homes that currently exist that have uh, high water demand uh, appliances such as old dishwashers, toilets and so on are fitted with newer, more water efficient designs. Okay, And also using grey water systems, so for example, things that recycle um, water that's used maybe like in the bath and the shower to flush toilets and so on. The other strategy on a more larger scale 
is to increase the alternative sources of water. So, for example, to invest heavily in desalinization plants that take the salt out of salt water and make it drinkable and usable. However, there is a huge cost behind this, and it also requires a huge amount of energy, which then does come into conflict with the sorry, conflict with the mitigation strategies. Because you know we are talking about, for example, one desalinization plant requires a similar amount of energy to power eight thousand homes. So you've got to find some way of offsetting that energy so as not to start affecting any mitigation strategies being used. One of the other major concerns is food production. Okay. So obviously with uh, drier climates and warmer temperatures, our agricultural sector is going to be affected. Crops that maybe have grown in the past aren't going to. They may start to fail in the drier conditions. Uh, the United Nations has said that agriculture needs to become climate smart. It needs to respond to the threats post to it by the change in climate. This may involve moving food production to uh, a new area, maybe where climate change hasn't resulted in such extreme temperatures, or maybe if your crops are growing, were growing in cooler conditions, moving them further north away from the equator so that you can still get those cooler conditions. It might also result in increase in artificial irrigation, so watering that land artificially, pumping water in from elsewhere rather than relying on natural rainfall to do the job for you. And one of the most commonly suggested adaptations strategies is a change in crop we've already developed crops that can grow in places like africa that are drought resistant we've had no need to use those in the uk for example because we don't get subject to droughts very often however if climate change it does result in this decreased rainfall that we expect in south england it may be that we need to move to uh, growing these kind of crops so there we've got our clear mitigation and adaptation strategies. Really important you know the difference. Remember, mitigation is designed to deal with the cause of the problem, reducing or preventing greenhouse gas emissions in the first place. Adapting is more strategies designed to cope with the changes that climate change is going to bring.